Hello friends, I am Navin from WP Help Guide. Welcome to another WordPress tutorial. If you are planning to build a fashion, travel or lifestyle blog, you are in the right place. In this tutorial, you will learn how you can easily create a beautiful blog using a free WordPress theme called Sarda Light. I will guide you step by step how to install the theme, activate necessary plugins, create posts and pages, set up different home page sections and much more. You will also learn how you can easily display your Instagram feed and add an email newsletter subscription. In the end, you will be able to create a unique and gorgeous website that you will be proud of. At first, I will show you how to set up the free version. Later, I will also show you how you can upgrade to the pro version without losing any of your existing progress and briefly walk you through the extra feature of the pro version. I will provide the timeline in the description below. If you want to refer to the specific section of the tutorial, you can click on the timeline and follow along. Before we get started, if you are new to the channel and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I request you to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss any of my future videos. Now let's have a look at the Sarda Light theme that we are going to use in this tutorial. Sarda Light is a free feminine WordPress theme developed by popular theme author Blossom Themes. You can go to their website blossomthemes.com and the theme can be found under shop, free themes and Sarda Light. And this is the sales page of Sarda Light theme. You can go ahead but first let's explore the demo. I have already opened the demo in a new tab. This is the demo of Sarda Light theme. So let's explore the demo and see what this theme has to offer us. At the top you can see there is a newsletter subscription. Then we have the header with the logo in the center. Then there is the slider where you can display your latest post. On the left hand side there is social media icons where you can link your social media profile. Then there is a featured area section where you can link important category pages and so on. Then there is a about section where you can display your short information or link any other page that you want to display here. Then we have the blog section. On the left hand side we have the blog and on the right hand side we have the widget area that is also known as sidebar. Then after the blog we have the shop section where you can sell the products that you want to sell from your site. Then we have the newsletter section where you can add a newsletter and grow your email list. Then there is the footer section so we have four footer areas where you can use different widgets. This theme includes 22 highly customizable widgets. Then we have the Instagram section and at the bottom we have the footer copyright. Now let's explore some of the inner pages of this theme. So here is the about page. So here is the about page where you can include the information about yourself. Then there is also shop. This means that the theme is compatible with WooCommerce. Then this is the category. And we also have the portfolio. And let's check the single portfolio. So in this theme you can also list your portfolios and this portfolio is also sortable based on the categories. Under pages you can see different layouts like right sidebar, left sidebar, full width center, full width, category page, source page and 404 page and there is also a contact page. Now let's explore the single post, how our post will look like. So let's click on this post. So this is the single post. So here is the breadcrumb and breadcrumb is considered good for the SEO. Here is the category of the post, here is the title and here is the updated date. And this is the featured image and here we have the post. And on the right hand side you can notice that we have different widgets 
and at the bottom we have the related tags then a beautiful author section previous post and newsletter subscription and some related posts and so on now let's explore the sales page of this theme and see what are the things that we get when we install this theme so i am on the sales page of sarda light and here you can explore and go through the sales page so here are the list of blocks that you can create using this theme so you can create a fashion block you can create a lifestyle block you can create a travel block food block beauty block parenting block fitness block health block self improvement block journal block or any kind of block that you want to create there are few reasons why you should choose sarda light and here you can see the features of sarda light so this theme offer the feature to change the color so this theme offers primary color and secondary color along with background color you can also choose from 900 plus google fonts and there is also typography control so you can change the font size for both primary and secondary font you can also upload your logo and control the width the theme is mobile friendly so your site will load smoothly across all devices this theme includes live preview so that you can preview the changes in real time even without publishing it the theme is also compatible with gutenberg the theme is well optimized for e speed and performance it is also seo optimized and google adsense optimized as mentioned before it is also compatible with woocommerce so you can list out your products or sell your merchandise then there is also a notification bar where you can add the newsletter subscription then for the banner section you get a smooth and attractive banner where you can display your latest post and there is also option to add static image or video with call to action then there are three feature boxes as shown in the demo then there is the about section then the shop section newsletter section Instagram section and author bio that you can use in the sidebar Then you can also edit your footer copyright and change the background image Theme also include the social media integration so you can link your social media profile It also includes some built-in SEO settings like Enable the last update post date and enable the breadcrumb feature You can also control the excerpt length how many characters that you want to display below each post so if you are unaware what the except means you can just check here and the description that is displaying below this post is called the except now there is also feature to show the related post of category or tags then there is also a comment section toggle what it basically does is when you enable this option the comment section will be displayed just below your content then there is a back to top this theme is widget ready and has 22 highly customizable widgets you can check the list of the widget that you get with this theme then there is the portfolio page template i have already shown you in the demo this theme is cross browser compatible is also easy to read schema friendly and support rtl it is also translation ready so that you can translate the theme in your local language along with that this theme is maintained by one of the popular theme author blossom themes so you will get the recent updates it will always update the theme with the wordpress standards and time and again they add essential feature to enrich your experience you can also add css and they also have extensive and beginner friendly documentation so let me show you the documentation this is the documentation of sarda light i'll provide the link in the description as well so as you can see here the documentation is well categorized into different sections so you can just follow the section and easily get what you want on your site so let's return back to the sales page they also provide quick and friendly support if you ever face any kind of issue you can just email their support team and they will get back to you with a solution now let's explore the demo of 
pro version and compare it with the free version so i have already opened the demo of pro version if you want to check just click on view pro and then go to live demo i have already opened the demo so let's go with the demo of the pro version this is the demo of sarda theme which is the pro version of sarda light so as you can see here at the top we have the newsletter subscription just like the free version however there is an extra section for instagram just below the newsletter section and just like the free version we have the header with the logo in the center then we have the slider and in the free version if you have noticed there was only one image however in the pro version there is an option to set two featured images for a post and on the left hand side there is the social media icons where you can link your social media and there is an extra option to add your newsletter subscription and here you can also link your social media profile and this will be sticky so that your visitors can easily subscribe to your site at any moment of time then we have the featured area just like the free version but there is an extra option to add unlimited number of featured boxes in the free version there was only option to add three boxes in the pro version you can add as many featured boxes you want then we have the about section with two images in the pre version there was only option to add one image then we have the block section just like the free version and here also you can see the option for two images on the right hand side there is a sidebar where you can add widgets then let's scroll down and if you have noticed that there is an extra option for socials here and to like the post and here is the affiliate section that you can add below each post and here you can promote your affiliate products and on commissions then we have the shop section just like the free version where you can add your merchandise and promote them and even sell them then we have an extra section called trending now where you can feature some of the popular posts then we have the newsletter section and we have the instagram section as well then there is an extra social media icon section where it will show your social media links now let's explore the sales page of pro version and compare it with the free version so this is the sales page of the sarda theme so let's see what are the extra option that it offers compared to the free version so you can just go through the description and just like the free version you can make any kind of blocks you want to make with this theme then here are the feature of sarda so it offers multiple unique layouts so there are four header layouts there are five slider layouts you can see the layouts here and there are 12 home page layouts to choose from for single post you get six single post and page layouts and this theme offers the ability to have unique layouts for each of your posts i'll show you when we dive into the pro version tutorial then there are 12 archive page layout just like the home page there are four page ignition layouts so you can go with numbered version or default newer older or you can also add ajax and ajax with auto infinite scroll then the, like the free version you can also change the color you can also choose 900 plus google fonts there's a typography control and you get the extra settings for controlling the heading font style then there is also one click demo import so with this feature you can import the starter content with a single click then we have the similar feature just like the free version it is also mobile responsive you can also preview the changes in real time it is also Gutenberg compatible 
and just like the free version it is speed optimized issue optimized and compatible with google adsense there is also advertisement widget that you can use and as shown in the demo you can promote your affiliate products to earn more and you can embed this affiliate product below each post this theme is also compatible with woocommerce then you get the notification bar to engage your visitors and in the pro version you get an option to add the newsletter along with CTA then there are three highly customizable banner option so the first one is a static image video with call to action just like the free one then we have the static image with newsletter so you can also add newsletter in the banner then we have the banner as a slider where you can display the latest post and the pro version offer some advanced control then you have the unlimited featured boxes about section where you can display your bio then the soft section just like the free version and the trending section is only available in the pro version where you can display your selected post or you can showcase your popular post then the newsletter section just like the free version instagram section there is also author bio on the sidebar and you also get an option to add your custom signature which displays below the post then i've already shown that this theme also offers dark mode which is easy on eyes during night time it also includes setting for lazy loading of your images you can read what is lazy loading here it basically helps you to speed up your site loading then there is a single post like feature and here you get an option to enable or disable automatic image crop then in the pro version you can also change the full copyright and there is also footer menu where you can link your privacy policy or terms and condition pages there is also built-in google analytics settings just like the free version you can also integrate your social media accounts and there is also a sticky social share that displays on the left hand side of your post and your readers can easily click and share your blog post just like the free version we also have the built-in seo settings for your blog post then there is an extra feature called like box for images it basically pops your image when someone clicks on that image then there is a sticky floating menu and you also get an option to make the widget sticky then the post excerpt feature just like the free version and related posts just like the free version and we also have the comment section toggle then there is an extra feature for drop cap which will make the first letter of your post larger then we have the back to top button this is also widget ready and includes 20 to highly customizable widgets then you can also add unlimited sidebars in the pro version and have different sidebar for each of your post and pages then you also get an unlimited background options in addition to that this theme also includes some basic performance settings for example lazy loading lazy load content images lazy load gavatar default javascript remove bar parameter and you can also host your font locally then there is the portfolio page template and there is also a landing page landing page is basically a blank page and here you can add any kind of information you want basically it is used for generating leads then this pro version also offers an easy customizer reset option and just like the free version it is also compatible across all major browsers it is easy to read also schema friendly it is also rtl script ready and it is also translation ready an extra feature is that it is multi-language compatible so you can have your blog in more than two languages and just like the free version with this theme you get regular updates and the theme team make sure that it meets the wordpress standards and time and again they add all the necessary kind of features then 
you can also add custom CSS and just like the free version they also have an extensive and beginner friendly documentation and the support is also friendly and quick so if you ever face any issue you can just reach out to them the cost of pro version is $49 they also offer an extra package which is Sarda theme plus theme installation service so if you purchase this service they will set up your site just like the demo and you can start editing the content now let's head over to Sarda Lite and download the theme to download the theme go to shop free themes and click on Sarda Lite I'm already on the sales page so I'll go ahead and click on get it now and this is the checkout page and here you can fill in the information and then click on free download I've already downloaded the theme so I'll skip this part now let's head over to our dashboard and start installing the theme to install the theme just go to your dashboard go to appearance go to themes and click on add new click on upload and here you can drag and drop the zip file that you have recently downloaded you can also click on choose file and select the theme file Sarda Lite to install it I have also made an in-depth tutorial on how to install a theme and how to tackle different kind of issue that you might face while installing the theme I'll provide the link in the description below now the theme has been installed now let's activate it once you activate the theme you will be taken to this page and here you can click on go to getting started to read more about this theme so let's explore so the theme I have installed is version 1 and here you can see the list of recommended plugins and here are some of the essential things like documentation link and how to contact the support team and you can also view the Sarda Lite demo on the right hand side you get an option to upgrade to the pro version and you can also visit the knowledge base which is basically the documentation in FAQs and support you will find the list of commonly asked questions so feel free to check this one now at the top you can see that this theme recommends the following plugin so let's install this plugin though it is not compulsory it is better to install this recommended plugin to get most out of this theme so to install the plugin just click on begin installing plugins and check mark the plugin that you want to install I'll go with all the plugins and select install option click on apply and once the plugin is installed just click on return to required plugins installer and you have to activate the plugin so check mark this option it will select all the plugins and then click on activate and apply now the plugin is activated now let's have a look at our site go to visit site and this is what you will see when you install the theme for the first time so it is just a basic skeleton and now we'll set up the site from the start and you can follow along to create your site as well now let's return to our dashboard and explore the customizer of this theme go to your dashboard and click on customize this is the customizer of Sarda Lite theme here you can check the link of pro version in demo and documentation you will find the necessary resources under site identity you can upload the logo and you can also upload the site icon which is also known as favicon you can change the site title font and you can also change the site title color then under appearance settings you can change the colors under background image you can set the background image for your website under typography you can change the primary and secondary font of your site and also adjust the font size under layouts you'll find the different layouts for your page post and you can also set the default sidebar layouts under general settings you will find lots of settings and I'll cover each of these settings in depth as we go along with the tutorial from menus you can create the menus and from widgets you can add widgets and 
from footer settings you can add the footer copyright message and from additional css you can add custom css to tweak the basic styling of this theme now let's return to our dashboard and create a post i simply click on this cross to create your post go to post and click on add new and here you will be taken to your Gutenberg tool so just go through this information I have already read it so I'll just close it and I've also made an in-depth tutorial on how to use the Gutenberg editor so I'll provide the link in the description below please feel free to check the tutorial it is an in-depth tutorial and I've covered all the essential blocks that you might use while creating a post now I'll create a post here I can add the title so I'll just paste a dummy title here this is the content area where you can add your blog post content for this tutorial I'll add some lower emission text and here I've added some dummy content and I'll also add some of the images in between these paragraphs so here I can add an image go to image block select the image that I want to use go to media library and here I can select any image that I want to use so I'll go with this image I can select the wide width I'll also add some gallery and if I want to I can just change the settings from the right hand side so maybe if this three this looks good now I'll finalize this post now in the permalink settings I'm not getting an option to change the permalink I'll show you how you can fix this issue now under categories I can add some categories so now let's add some categories add some tags then set the featured image just click on featured image box and select the image that you want to use for your featured image so let's go with this image set as featured image and here is the excerpt part we'll skip this one but if you want to add excerpt you can add here now let's publish this post now let's see the preview of this post so this is the preview of our post so everything looks fine If you have noticed my URL is slightly different so here is the dates so let's fix this issue and display only the site title so to fix that just go to your dashboard and go to settings and go to permalinks and here you can select the post name when you select post name it will just include the post title in the slot so let's click on save changes now let's go to our site click on refresh and here I can click here and as you can see here the URL is changed now let's update this post and change the slog I can change the slog now so I'll just use a shorter version once you modify the slog never forget to click on update now let's see our post and as you can see here our slog is changed as well let's return to our post dashboard and see what are the extra option we have so if you scroll down you will see the option for the sidebar so by default it is the default sidebar and I'll show you how you can change the default sidebar in a moment then we have the full width option so let's select this one and update our post and refresh here as you can see here our post is now full width then the other option is full width center it basically will make your content in the center so let's update our post and check it now the content width is slightly narrower than the full width and this is easy to read so this is the most common layout used in blog now let's explore the other option the other option is for left sidebar
and here is our sidebar on the left and the default layout is right sidebar now click on update refresh your blog post and here we have the right sidebar also note that you can change sidebar layout for each of your posts so if you have 10 posts then each post can have different sidebar layouts however if you want to have a uniform sidebar layout so you can also achieve that so for example i want to have full width sidebar for all of my posts so let's go with this one full width sidebar i'll just leave with default sidebar update it and i will just change the settings so all of my posts will have full width sidebar even without selecting any option from here you can change the default sidebar layout from the customizer so let's go to our customizer i'll go to this post and click on customize and under layout settings you can select the default layout for your page sidebar and post sidebar so as you can see here the default sidebar is right sidebar so let's go with this full width center layout and as you can see here the changes happens in real time so now let's publish it and earlier we had right sidebar but when i refresh this post it will be full width center also keep in mind that you have set the default sidebar for all of your posts however you can still have different sidebar layout for your post so for example in this post if i want to have a right sidebar i can do as well i'll go with right sidebar click on update and this will be right sidebar if i create a new post that post will have the full width center layout because it is the layout i have defined as a default layout for all of my posts let me show you an example here currently i am in the full screen mode so i'll just toggle this off and create a new post and here i can add a random title now i'll paste some lorem ipsum text and if you notice that it is still the default sidebar layout now let's set some categories so i'll go with fashion makeup and set the featured image so in this case i'll go with this image now click on publish and let's preview the post as you can see here this post has full width center layout and this post has the right sidebar layout i hope you are now clear how to use the sidebar layout now i'll go ahead and create some more posts and then we'll dive into configuring different section of this theme i have added some blog posts on this website as you can see here i have published more than 10 posts and there are lots of things left to do now let's dive into the dashboard and start configuring the different section of the home page we'll first begin with the menu and then we'll dive into other sections so let's go to our dashboard and then go to appearance and go to menus and here you can create the menu for your site so we'll start by writing the name of the menu i've also made an in-depth tutorial on how to create a menu please feel free to check the tutorial i'll provide the link in the description below now once you add the menu name just click on create menu here you will see the display location this theme offers three different menu location primary secondary and footer now let's add some menu item to this menu so i'll add some categories fashion trends now i'll also add a custom link for my home page let's put the home at the top now let's rename this fashion into uppercase i'll do the same for trends and now select the primary menu and click on save menu now if i go to my site 
here I'll see my primary menu there is also option for adding the secondary menu which will display here so let's add the secondary menu as well back to your dashboard now let's click on create a menu and name it whatever you like in my case I'll go with secondary menu and add some other categories so here I'll go with beauty travel and only add two items for the moment but as we go on creating more pages we'll update our menu beauty once you are done click on secondary menu and click on save menu now when you refresh your site your secondary menu will display here if you have noticed the demo there was also a description above the each menu item so let's add that description as well in order to add the description go to your dashboard and if you have noticed there is no option to add the description you have to enable that option for that go to screen options and enable the description field and now you will see the description so let's add some description to all our menu items once you add the description just click on save menu and it will update the description on your navigation menu let's do the same for the primary menu go to your menu select the primary menu and here you can add the description once you add the description for your primary menu just click on save and refresh your site as you can see here the description is now displaying for all our menu items now let's dive into the customizer and start configuring different section of your site go to customizer now let's configure the site identity panel go to site identity and let's upload a logo just drag and drop the logo that you want to use and just click on select you will get a cropping option you can either crop the image or you can just click on skip cropping i'll crop the image in my case so i'll select crop image and here is my logo since my logo already include my site title i'll just avoid this one and if i want my logo to be smaller i can reduce my width or if i want to make it larger i can increase the width so this looks fine to me so i'll skip this part now you can also upload the favicon for your site favicon are displayed in your browser tab and it is something that you should always include for your site so let's upload the favicon which is also known as site icon in wordpress in my case i will use this logo and click on skip cropping and as you can see here my favicon is displaying here now if you have used the site title you can also change the font family and style and also increase the font size if needed you can also change the site title color and once you are done just click on publish now let's go to another settings the next one is appearance settings and from here you can customize the color you can add in background image and you can also change the typography so let's change the color here i can select the primary color so let's choose any other color you can also change the secondary color of your site to change the color just click here and select the color you want or you can also enter the hex value i'll go with slightly darker color here and you can also move this cursor around if you want to change the value this looks fine to me so i'll go with this in addition to primary and secondary color you can also change the background color of your site to change the color simply click here and select the color you want to use so let me show you how it would look so i can go with this one and as you can see here the background color of your site is changed I'll revert it back. 
now let's go to another settings the another setting is for setting the background image so here you can upload any background image that you want to use so let's use this image and as you can see here is the background image you can also change the image position and what kind of preset that you want to use but now i'll remove this background image the next setting is for typography and here you can change the primary font and secondary font you can also adjust the font size for both this font so now let's change this font to any other font As you can see here the changes happens in real time you can also change the font size of the primary font so let's reduce the font size by one pixel so this looks good to me you can also change the secondary font so let's go with some other fonts and as you can see here the secondary font is also changed if you want to change the font size feel free to change the font size as per your needs once you like the changes you can click on publish and you can check your site as you can see here the primary and secondary color of the website has been changed along with the primary and secondary fonts so now explore the other settings I'm back in the customizer and then the next setting is layout settings I've already covered the layout setting earlier so I'll skip this one and then the most important section is the general settings and from here you can configure different home page section the first setting is notification bar here you can enable the notification bar to add the newsletter subscription so let's enable this one and here you have to add the newsletter shortcode we haven't created any newsletter so let's go ahead and create the newsletter so for now i'll just keep at titties and then head over to my dashboard go to blossom themes email newsletter and click on add new this is the interface of blossom themes email newsletter i've also made an in-depth tutorial on how to configure this plugin and integrate different email services I'll provide the link in the description below. Please feel free to check the tutorial. Here you can add the site title. Since I am going to use this in the notification bar, I will skip the site title. And here you can enable the fields that you want to use. Let's go ahead with name and email. And if you want to change the placeholder text, you can change it from here. And in the form note, you can add the newsletter message. So here I'll just paste some dummy text. And if you want to enable the GDPR option, you can enable this one. But for now, I'll skip this part. Now, in the appearance settings, you can change the background color or you can also set the background image. I'll go with the background color and select the background color for my newsletter. So here I will go with the custom color. And for font, I'll go with white. And once you are done, just click on publish to display the newsletter all you have to do is copy this short code and go to your customizer and paste the short code that you have recently copied and click on publish as you can see here the newsletter is displaying now let's move to another section which is this slider section so here is the banner section and from here you can configure the slider so you get an option to go with either static video cta banner or you can also select the banner as slider which is the default option if you want to disable the banner you can select this option and the banner will disappear i'll go with the banner as slider option but i'll also show you how you can add static video cta banner so let's explore this option select this one and you will get different option so here you can either upload a video or you can just copy the youtube url or you can also use an image so let's use an image in this case 
just drag and drop the image that you want to use or select the image if you have already uploaded the image in my case I'll just upload a new image and then click on select and crop you can check the theme documentation for the recommended image size if your image is larger then you will get a cropping option and simply drag and drop the section you want to display in the banner section once you are happy just click on crop image here you get an option to add the title subtitle and include two buttons in the CTA section so this is the label for the first button you can add any link you want then this is the second button level and you can also include another link once you are happy just click on publish and you can visit your site and here you will see the changes now let's revert it back to the banner as slider option and explore what are the settings available here you get an option to select latest post which will automatically display your latest post in the banner slider or you can also select the category and feature post from a specific category so let's explore the category option and here you will get the drop down for all the categories that you have created so if i go with fashion category it will only list the post from fashion category so this is also a fashion category and this is also fashion category post now let's revert it back to the latest post and when you select the latest post option you get an option to set the number of slides so you can increase the number of slides if you want to you can go up to 20 posts in the sliders however it is better to have few number of posts in the slider so you can go for either 3 4 or 5 so I'll go with 4 in this case and you can also enable the slider loop when you enable this option your slider will automatically loop so if I go here you can see it keeps on rolling the next option is for enabling or disabling of the caption if I disable this option you can see only the image displays however it is better to have this option enabled you can also change the slider read more text if you want to use any other text feel free to change this default text then you also get an option for slider animation here you can select different kind of slider animation you want to use for this one so let's check one animation so maybe fade out slide out right and here you can see the animation is happening now let's go to another section the next section is featured area section this is an important section and here you can link important post pages or category so let's add some featured area boxes to add that you have to use the text and image text widget so let's add that widget first go with text widget And here you can add the title for the featured area and if you want to add some description below this title you can do it as well so let's add some text below this title so I'll just copy some random text and here the text is displaying now let's add the featured boxes to add the featured boxes you have to use the blossom image text widget click on add widget and search for image text widget click on this one and click on add image here you get an option to upload an image and even add the link text and feature link now let's add the first feature box simply click on upload to upload the image and from your media library you can select the image or you can upload an image I would recommend you to check the documentation for the recommended size. I'll go with this image and click on select. Here you can add the link text for this image. So let's link our Instagram account. And here in the featured link you have to add the link for this image. So I'll add the 
Instagram link. Now let's add another image. And in this case, I want to link to my category that is fashion. Click on fashion and to copy the fashion category link, go to your site and click on this link. Copy this one and paste it here. Now let's add the last feature box. Simply click on upload and select the image that you want to use. In my case, I want to use this image. Select this one. And for the link text, I want to link it to my about page. But we don't have the about page at the moment. So let's just keep this as blank. So I'll just go with about me. And for featured link, I'll just put has. Once we create the about page, we'll replace this has with the about page link. Once you are done, just click on apply. And your featured box will show here. Now let's move on to the next section that is creating the about section. You can create the about section from here. Go to about section and here you have to use the featured page widget. However, we haven't created the about page. So let's get back to our dashboard and create the about page. To create the pages, go to pages, click on add new and give it a title. Then you can add the information about yourself. For this tutorial, I'll just put some random text here. And then you have to set the featured image. So let's go with this image and click to set as featured image. Just click on publish. And then go back to your customizer and click on publish and refresh the customizer now go to general settings go to about section and to add the about page you have to use blossom feature page widget to add the widget click on add widget and search for this widget click on this widget and here you will see the pages that you have created currently i have only created one page so i'll just select this page And scroll down to the about section and here we have the about page content you get an option to display full page content so if you enable this option it will display everything that you have added in the about page and currently i have added so many texts which is something i would like to avoid so i'll just disable this option then you can Check mark this option if you want to show the featured image. And here is the featured image. You also get an option to change the image alignment. Currently it is on right. So let's change it back to left. And we have the image on left now. Then you can also enable the read more button. You also get an option to open the link in the same tab so you can enable this option if you want to change the read more text feel free to do it from here if you have noticed the about page content doesn't look good currently the content is trimmed but you can fix this issue by adding the excerpt before you do that make sure you publish the changes and then go to your dashboard and under excerpt you can include the information that you want to display in the about section so let's add some excerpt here to add a line break simply press the enter key and go to the new line and add the text that you want to use Once you are done adding the excerpt, simply click on update and go to your site. You scroll down to the about section and as you can see here the about section looks much better. Now let's click on read more and the about page doesn't look good so let's do some refinement here. 
so return back to your about page and let's select the full width center layout and click on update and now this looks much better now let's return to the home page and here we have the about section now let's return to the customizer in addition to this one you also get an option to change the background image here the background image recommended size is 1920 by 1080 pixel in png format you can either use this one or if you have any other background simply replace this background image now let's update the feature area where we have left the about section as blank so go back and go to featured area extend this one and here you can add the about page link so let me go to the dashboard and open this page copy this link go to the customizer and replace this hash with the about page link then simply click on publish now let's move on to the next section which is the social media settings as mentioned earlier you can link your social media profile which displays on the left hand side of your site so let's enable this option you can add up to 10 social media profiles. to add your social media profile just click on add new links and here you can search for the social media profile icon so let's add Facebook select the icon when you see it and here you can add the link of your social media profile now let's add some other social media profile as well I have successfully added four of my social media profile you can also click on this icon to collapse the social media profile and once you are done just click on publish and if you scroll down you will see your social media profile on the left hand side so this is how you can easily add the social media profile on your site now let's move to the other section which is the SEO settings here you can enable last update post date by default when this option is disabled it only displays your published date however if you enable this option you can display the last updated date of your post it is considered good for SEO so I would recommend to keep this option enabled the next option is for the breadcrumb which displays on your single post so let me show you and this is the breadcrumb feature and it is something very crucial for SEO so I would recommend you to keep this option enabled if you want to change the breadcrumb home text you can change it from here now let's go to the another settings that is post and pages settings from here you can control the settings for post and pages the first option is to hide the prefix in archive pages so let me show you what this really means so if you go to any category by default it only displays the category name but if you disable this option it will display the word category if you want to hide the word category you can enable this option the next option is to enable excerpt for your blog post which is enabled by default so if you go to your blog post you will see the excerpt is displaying here and here if you want to disable the excerpt it will display the full content of your post you can disable this option if you want to display full content of your post but you should keep it enabled so that it only display the excerpt for your blog post you get an option to change the excerpt length so if you want to decrease or increase the excerpt length you can do it from here so let's decrease slightly and here it looks good the next option is for adding the blog title so currently we don't have any title here so let's add a blog title and here we have the blog title you can also add a blog description the next option is for changing the 
read more button text so by default it is read the article if you want to use any other text you can change it from here the next option is for single post so let's open one of the single posts and the first option is to hide the author section so let's scroll down to see we have the author section or not as you can see here we don't have the author section it is because we don't have the author description in order to show the author section you need to have the author description so let's add author section on our blog post to do so return to your dashboard go to users and click on your profile and scroll down till you see the description section here you can add the description so let me add some lorem ipsum text once you add the description just update your profile and go back to your site currently it will not show because it is not refreshed so i'll just toggle this section to refresh my browser and if you scroll down we have the author section here so this is how you can easily display the author section and if you want to disable the author section you can enable this toggle and the author section will disappear let me enable this section again now the next option is to display related post by default it is set to true and it will display your related post if you want to hide this section you can simply turn this off and it will hide the related post section let me turn it back the next option is to allow comments on your site by default it is set to true but if you want to hide comment section from your site you can disable this option The next option is to toggle the comment section. If you have noticed, the comment section displays at the end of the post. When you enable this toggle, the comment section will be displayed just below your post content. So let me enable this option. You have to publish this one and you have to refresh the customizer. Now let's go back to the post and pages settings once again. Go to general settings, go to post and pages settings and open the post that we had opened earlier so this was the post and you scroll down till you see the comment section as you can see the comment section now displays just below the post content below the toggle comment section there is a setting for hiding the category post author name and posted date so let's check how this setting works so currently you can see it is displaying the category of the blog post when you enable this option, it will hide the category. There is also an option to hide the post author. And currently we don't have the post author here, but we have the post author on the home page. And when you enable this option, it will hide the post author on the home page. So let's go back to the home page. And here we have the post author. So let's enable this option and it will hide the post author. Now you can also hide the post publish date to do so just enable this option and it will hide the date. If you want to hide the comment you can just disable this option and it will hide the comment section as well. So let's revert it back. This is all about the post and pages settings. Now let's return to the other settings which is shop section. As mentioned in the beginning of this tutorial this theme is compatible with WooCommerce. So you need to use the WooCommerce in order to use the shop section. Now let's dive into our dashboard and install WooCommerce plugin. Go to plugins, click on add new and search for WooCommerce and now click on install now once the plugin is installed click on activate 
then you will be taken to the WooCommerce setup page. I have written an in-depth article on how to configure the WooCommerce. I'll provide the link in the description below. For now, I'll just skip this part. Now I'm back in the dashboard. Now you need to create some of the products. To add your product, go to products, click on add new. From here, you can create the product. Here you can add the product title. Here you can add the product description and here are some settings for your products. I'll not go into depth on how to add a product but I'll provide the link in the description below on how to add a product. Please feel free to check the article on how you can easily create product in WooCommerce. Now I'll go ahead and add some products. I'll pause the tutorial and start adding some of the products. When I'm done with adding products, I'll resume the tutorial. As you can see on my screen, I have successfully added six products. Before we configure the shop section on the home page, let's create some of the essential pages that is necessary for WooCommerce. To create those pages, go to pages, click on add new. The first page that you need to create is shop. Simply add the title and click on publish. In addition to shop, you also need to create three more pages. The pages are cart, checkout and my accounts. So let's go ahead and create those pages as well. Simply click on add new. Add the title cart and here you have to enter the WooCommerce shortcode. The shortcode for cart is WooCommerce underscore cart. Once you are done, just click on publish. Now let's create checkout page. The shortcode for checkout page is WooCommerce checkout. Now once you have added the shortcode, click on publish. Now the final page that you need to create is my account. Simply click on add new. For my account, the shortcode is WooCommerce underscore my underscore account. Once you add that shortcode, just click on publish. One more step is left that is to assign these pages under WooCommerce settings. So go to WooCommerce, go to settings and go to products. And here you can assign the shop page. Click on save changes then you also need to assign those pages that you had created like cart checkout and my account which you can do under advance and here you can select the cart page checkout page and my account page if you have also created terms and condition page you can select it from here once you are done just click on save changes now let's add this in our menu to do so go to appearance go to menus and i will add this in secondary menu so i'll switch to secondary menu click select and let's add shop and these three pages as well i will add cart under shop so i'll push it to the right same with the my account and checkout now Let's rename them in uppercase. Once you are done, just click on save menu and it refresh your site. And here you have the shop in the menu. We have skipped the description, so let's add it back. And once you add the description you can click on save menu and when you refresh your site you'll see the description for shop 
menu as well. So now let's return to the customizer and configure the shop section. Go to general settings and then go to shop section. Here you need to use the product widgets or if you want to promote any kind of affiliate products you can also use the custom HTML. In this case I will just add products. So let's add the widget products. Search for the widget products and here you will get list of widgets that you can use so i'll go with this products and here we have the products on the home page depending on the widgets that you are using you might get different options so here you can select and filter the products and here you can also sort the product by price random sales i'll just go with the date and you can also change the title of the shop section so let's change it to something else You also get an option to change the background color currently it is white so let's change it to something else and here i have the background color of the shop section once you are done just click on pop this and now let's move on to the next section which is the newsletter section earlier we had created the newsletter and embedded at the top you can also add the newsletter at the bottom of shop section. So let's create the newsletter section to add below the shop section. To do so, return to your dashboard and go to Blossom Themes email newsletter and click on add new. Here you can add the title for your newsletter. So let's add some random title. You can enable the field you want. So let's go with name and email. You can also change the placeholder text and you can also add the form note which will be displayed just below the newsletter title. So I'll just paste some dummy text. You can also change the background color for the newsletter or you can also set the background image. In this case I'll go with the background color. You can also change the value by dragging this one or you can also set the hex value. And you also get an option to change the font color so let's go with black one and once you are done just click on publish and then copy this short code return to your customizer and paste this short code the newsletter is not displaying because we haven't enabled this one so let's enable this option and here we have our newsletter you can also enable the newsletter section on the single post when this option is disabled the newsletter won't display on the single post so if you want to enable newsletter on single post you have to enable this option so let's enable this option as well now let's move on to next section that is to configure the instagram go to instagram settings and enable this section Now click on here and it will take you to the dashboard of Instagram. I have made an in-depth tutorial on how you can easily connect your Instagram and display the Instagram feed on your website. I'll provide the link in the description below. The video tutorial also cover the issue that you might face and how to resolve those issues. Now to connect with Instagram simply click on connect with Instagram and you will be taken to the Instagram login page enter your login credentials and click on login and then this plugin will ask for some permission to access your profile info and access your media file just click on authorize and the plugin will automatically insert the access token and username you can also configure the number of photos you want to display how many photos you want to display per row and you can also change the profile link text and you can also specify how many times do you want this plugin to check your Instagram feed in general it is recommended to have one days once you are done just click on save changes now the warning message that you see here will be gone now simply visit your site now scroll down 
and currently we don't have the Instagram setting so let's go back to the customizer and as you have noticed that I haven't published the changes so let's publish this one and refresh this by switching the toggle and as you can see here here are my Instagram feed in this way you can easily display your Instagram feed on your site now let's move to another section that is miscellaneous settings and under this you can find the settings to change the header background you can also enable or disable the soft page description if you want to disable the animation that you see while scrolling then you can also disable this option you can also change the 404 image of your site currently you get this funny image but if you have something cool you can remove this one and upload the image that you want to use so let me show you how the 404 page looks on this site so let's check our 404 page and this is the 404 page design and if you don't like this image as mentioned earlier you can change it from here now let's move on to the next section that is adding widgets in the sidebar and in footer area you can add the widgets in sidebar and footer areas from widgets and here you will get an option to add the widget in the and in footer areas now let's first of all add some widgets in the sidebar and these are the some of the defaults widgets that you get when you install the theme so let's remove this one Start the light themes comes with 22 highly customizable widgets to add the widgets simply click on add a widget and search for the widget that you want to use so let's add earth bio here you can add the title of the author bio so let's just go to that section here you can add the author bio title here you can add your name if you already have a gavitar account then it will automatically pull the image but you can also upload an custom image so let's upload one for ortho section I want to use this image and then you can also add the description for your ortho section so let's add some lorem ipsum text in addition to description you also get an option to display signature in the author bio widget you can either write your name or upload a signature so let's upload one select upload and search for your media library I already have uploaded an image so I'll just select this option and click on select and here is the signature you can also add a button in the author section I'll skip this part but if you want to link to your about page or any other important page maybe contact page then you can use this feature you can also link your social media profile so let's add some social media profile simply search for the social media you want to add and add the link of your social media profile once you have added social media profile simply click on apply and here it will display your social media profile so let's add some other useful widgets in the sidebar as well so one of the most popular widget is recent posts go for blossom recent post here you can change the widget title number of posts you want to display in this widget you can also display the post thumbnail and display the post date You also get an option to choose from three different layouts so please feel free to choose the layout you like most the next popular widget is popular post widget where it will list some of your popular posts of all times you can change the widget title select the number of posts you want to display and you can display the popular post based on post views or comment count then you can also display the post thumbnail post date and 
select the layout that you want to use so let's go with another layout so let's go with style 2 and here is the style 2 widget now let's add instagram feed in the sidebar as well simply search for instagram and use this widget and here you have to add your username so in my case it is wp.helpguide and then you can select the number of posts you want to display and number of photos per row so in my case i'll go with six photos and display two photos per row and here is the instagram feed and once you are done just click on pop this now let's go ahead and configure the footer area as well to do so just return back and go to footer one I'll select this option, go with the style one and here we have the recent post. Now let's add another widget. So in this case I can go for newsletter and here from the drop down list I can select the newsletter that I want to use. So I'll go with this one which doesn't have the title and if you want to enable the GDPR you can check mark this option and if you have a newsletter icon you can also upload the newsletter icon from here i'll just skip this one now let's add the widget in footer 3 as well so here i will add the popular post widget and here i'll also enable the show post thumbnail and show post date and here we have recent post newsletter and popular post if you want to add widget in the footer 4 area you can do as well i'll go with 3 in the footer now once you are done just click on publish and let's have a look at our site this is our site now so let's look at the home page so here we have instagram fashion category about me page it is the about section and here we have the recent posts and on the right hand side we have the widgets and we have the shop section we have the newsletter section and we have the footer section with widgets and finally we have the instagram section next thing that is left is to change the footer copyright and add the footer menu so let's do that as well and finalize this site let's return to your customizer and go to footer settings and here you can change the footer background image and add your footer copyright so let's add the footer copyright message And here you can see the footer copyright has been successfully updated however in the free version you cannot disable this option this option is only available in the pro version i'll show you how you can easily disable this option in the pro version now the only thing left is to add the footer menu so let's return to our dashboard and go to appearance and go to menus and here create a new menu name it as footer menu so that you can easily distinguish between different menus that you have created click on create menu here you can add the pages you want to display in the footer usually you can link to your privacy policy page and terms and condition i haven't created that page so i'll just add about me page and soft page sort it and then assign it to the footer and click on save menu and now let's refresh our site and here we have the footer menu with about me and soft page this is all about sarda light theme i hope this video was helpful and now you can easily build your site using this theme if you face any issue do let me know in the comments below you can also reach out to the 
theme support team for assistance. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you find this tutorial useful, please like the video and hit the subscribe button so that you never miss any of my future videos. Now I'll show you how you can easily migrate to the pro version without losing any of your existing changes. You can purchase the pro version from Blossom Themes, go to shop, go to premium themes and click on Sarda. You can purchase this $49 package. To purchase it, click on get it now. And then you can fill in your information and then click to proceed to the payment. I've already made the purchase so I'll skip this part. Once you make the purchase, you will receive a zip file. So now let's head over to the dashboard and install the pro version. To install the pro version, go to appearance and go to themes. Click on add new and then click on upload theme. Here you can simply drag the zip file or click on choose file to select the pro version that you have purchased. Then click on open and click on install now. Once the theme is installed, click on activate. Then you will be taken to the getting started page and on the right hand side you will see the option to activate your license key. Along with your purchase information you will also receive the license key for this theme. Simply enter the license key here. I will enter my license key and click on save changes. And then click on activate license. And as you can see here, my license key is activated. Once your license key is activated, you will receive automatic update with a simple click. Now let's have a look at our site and see what are the changes happened to our site. So I'm on my site now and let's hit the refresh button. As you can see here, the settings that we have configured in the free version are automatically migrated. At the top, we have the newsletter section just like we configured in the free version. We have our header with the logo in the center and we have the same font and color. Then there is this slider section. Then we have our feature area with three featured boxes just like in the free version. And we have the about section like we configured in the free version. Then we have the block section and sidebar on the right. And the settings that we configured for the block section is also visible here. And we get an extra option here to like the post and share the post on social media like Facebook and so on. Now let's scroll to the shop section and see whether the changes has been automatically migrated or not. And we have the shop section just like we configured in the free version. And we have the same background color. And we have the newsletter section with the same color that we configured earlier. And this is our footer area with three footer widgets. And then we have our Instagram section. And there is a social media profile just below the Instagram section in the pro version. And we have our footer copyright along with the footer menu. So now let's head over to the customizer and see what are the additional settings that this theme offers compared to the free version. So let's go to the customizer. Now let's explore each of the panels in the customizer. The first one is information links and here you can find the important links that you can explore. The next option is for site identity and here you can see the settings are similar just like the free version. So I'll skip this one. The next is colors and the color that we have added in the free version are automatically migrated when we upgraded to the pro version. Here you also get an option to change the notification bar color. So currently we are using newsletter but when we switch to a CTA then you can also change that color from here. I'll show you in a moment. The next option is for background which is similar to the free version where you had option to select the image. But in the pro version you get additional settings for patterns where 
you get 63 unique patterns to choose from if you like anyone you can simply click on the pattern you like and then click on publish to change the pattern then the next setting is layout settings and here you can find different layouts for different section on the website the first one is header layouts and here you can find four different header layouts so let's experiment with one of the header layouts so let's go with this header layout and this is the header layout you can also go with other header layout if you like so let's check this header layout and this is the fourth header layout depending upon the header layout you choose you have to configure your menu once again because this header layout displays only primary menu so you have to go again and modify the primary menu so I'll switch it back to the first one now let's explore the other layouts the next layout is for slider layout here you get five different slider layouts so let's go with this layout and see how it looks and here we have the beautiful slider also you can select any layout you like so let's experiment with this layout and here we have this layout I'll go with this layout so this looks cool to me okay. now let's go with another layout and there is home page layout as well the home page layout is shown here if you have noticed here are two images which means that you can add two images for your single post so let's head over to our post and start editing the post so I'll click on publish changes and let's go back to the dashboard and edit some of the posts to add second featured image so let's begin with this post and if you scroll down here you will get an option to add the second featured image so let's add featured image for this post let's go with this one and click on update let's add second featured image for few posts I've added second featured image for some of the posts so let's go to our home page and see the changes currently in the slider this layout will display one post so let's scroll to the home page and here you can see this post displays two featured images same with this post and this post as well now let's return back to our customizer and let's select any other layout and as you can see here I have selected this layout where the sidebar is on the left so you get different home page layouts to choose from so you can also select this layout or you can also go with this layout when you hover over this image it will show the second image so you can choose any layout that you want to use for the home page I'll go with this layout let's go to the top and regarding the slider you can also show two featured images in the slider so let's go back to the slider layout and this layout show two featured images and here we have two featured images and it looks much better and if you have noticed the slider animation that we had added in the free version is also automatically migrated and you can see the animation here so now let's explore the other settings the other setting is for archive pages so archive pages are your category pages search pages and author archive pages so if I click on this travel category or fashion category currently this shows two layouts but if I want to use different layout for this archive page then I can just go and select this layout and as you can see here I can have different layout on the home page and different layout on the archive page so this layout will be applied on all your categories tags search pages and author archive now let's go back 
and explore the other layout option. The other layout option is for single post layout. So let's open this one and let's open any one post. So let's go to the home page and let's open this post. And currently this layout is selected. And if you want to use any other layout, then you can simply select from here and here it displays so while selecting the layout you have to be specific which layout will display your post in much better way so currently this layout only display one post so this may not be an ideal layout to choose for this post and from this here and from these settings you can define the default setting for all your single posts however you can specify which layout you want to use for the specific post so let me show you this one so let's publish this one let's go to the home page refresh here and let's open this post and as you can see here this post uses this layout so let's edit this post and use different layout just for this post when you scroll down here you get an option to set the single post layout for this specific post since i have used two images i'll go with this layout and click on update now let's view the post and here we have this layout but when you open other posts so let's for example this post this post still have this layout it is because in the customizer we define this as a default layout so depending upon what you want to use as a default layout feel free to select from here and if you want to display different layout for a specific post you can select it from here single layout option along with that you also get an option to choose the sidebar layout so currently the default layout we have set in the customizer currently we have set full width center as the default layout for all our posts but if you want to use this one for all your posts then you can select this option and it will be applied and as you can see here and if you want to use full width center for this post only you can modify that value from here for example you can go with full width center for this post and click on apply and visit the post and this post will have full width center layout this is all about how you can easily and effectively use the slider layout option. So let's go with full width center layout. And for home single post layout, let's go with this layout. Now let's publish the changes. The next option is for single page layout. The concept is same for single post and pages. You also get an option to set the default page layout for all of your pages and if you want to use different page layout for specific pages then you can select from the meta information i'll show you when we dive into the about section so let's go with default layout this one the next option is for general sidebar and here as mentioned earlier you can select the default sidebar layout for your pages post and this is for all your archive pages source pages and so on the next option is for designation settings and here if you have noticed on the home page we have this one and two number navigation but you can switch to different designation type you can have for newer older or as a load more button or you can also have auto infinite scroll designation style feel free to choose the one you like now let's go to the another settings the next setting is for typography and here in addition to the body setting you also get an option for heading settings so let's go with body settings and see whether there are an extra option the settings are same and at the top you can see the list of supported google fonts so let's click here and explore and here you can search for the font that you want to use you don't have to manually check each and every font so just explore through this google fonts library and whichever font you like you can just type the name here and it will be applied 
In addition to this primary and secondary font, you also get an option to host your font on your server. So let's explore this option. By default, the theme faces fonts from the Google, but if you enable this option, and you should definitely enable this option so that this theme downloads the font on your server and it makes quicker to load your font. So let's enable this option. I'll get back to these settings in a moment. Then let's go to the other option. So there are settings for headings. So S1, S2, S3 and the setting is same for this heading fonts. Here you get an option to change the font family. Again you can explore the Google Fonts library and use the heading font whichever you want. The font setting is same for S2 settings and S6 settings. So let's move to another settings. The next is the general settings and here let's go to notification bar settings. And in the free version we only had newsletter option but in the pro version you also get an option to add CTA at the top. And here you can link to your important pages so for example if you have privacy policy page you can also link here or you can also include link to your important pages like shop page and so on in addition you also get an option to open the link in a new window so if you have link to another website this for example you have added your appointment page link then you can add appointment page link here and toggle this option so when your readers click on that link it will open in a new tab and your visitor will still have your site opened now let's switch it back to newsletter and then go back and here we get an extra option that is the pop-up newsletter section and here you can add a newsletter so let's add one for this you have to use blossom themes email newsletter widget source for the widget click here and here you get a drop down to select the newsletter so let's select this one and if you scroll down you will see this sticky newsletter section this makes easier for your subscribers to easily subscribe your site whenever they want so this is something very cool feature and if you want to grow your newsletter subscription then you should definitely use this feature now let's explore the other option the next option is for banner section in the free version we only had option for static image video CTA banner and banner as a slider but in the pro version you also get an option to add newsletter banner so let's click on this newsletter banner and here you can include your newsletter and here are two different layouts for the newsletter so you can use the layout you want and then add the newsletter shortcode so let's add the newsletter shortcode here and see how it looks simply copy the newsletter you want to use or create a newsletter I'll provide the link in the description below how you can easily create newsletter let's copy the shortcode and then go back to the customizer and paste it here and here we have the newsletter you can also go with this layout if you like and here is the full width layout so feel free to experiment with the layout that works for you I'll switch it back and let's go with the banner as slider option in addition to the Free version there are extra options like slider speed you can control how fast this slider should rotate and this option only works when no slider animation is selected let's change the slider speed and let me reduce to the lowest value and as you can see here the slider is rotating very fast so let's increase to a slightly higher number and you can go up to 10 seconds so feel free to experiment which speed works for you so let's go with 600 milliseconds and once you are done just click on publish and every 6 seconds it will change the slide 
In the free version, you get an option to select from latest post, category. However, in the pro version, you get an extra option for selecting pages as well as adding custom slides. So in the custom slides, you can add your own custom slides. And here you can get the option add two featured images and add the title, subtitle and link. I'll not go into depth. You can check the documentation for step by step process. So let's delete this one and import it back to the latest post. Once you are done, don't forget to click on publish. Now let's return to the other settings. The next setting is for featured area section. And the setting is similar to the free version but in the pro version you can add as many featured boxes you want and there will be a carousel. So let's add one. Here you can add the title. Here you can add the link for this featured box. So let's add the travel category. So let me go to the home page. And here I want to link to my travel category. So let's check where we have the travel category. So here is the travel category. Simply open this link and copy this one and paste it here. Whenever you make any changes in the featured area, don't forget to click on apply. And as you can see here, we have the carousel and we have the travel category. Then click on publish to publish your changes. You can also change the background image of this featured area. The recommended size for the background image is 1920 by 1080 pixels. I recommend you to use a white image or a PNG image. Now let's explore the other settings. The next setting is for about section just like the free version. So let's dive into it. If you have noticed in the demo of the pro version, there was an option to add two images in the about section. So let's return to our dashboard and see we have the option or not. Let's go to the pages and click on all pages and click on the about page and scroll down here you'll see the option to add the second featured image so let's add the second featured image and here let's go with this image and click on select and click on update let's view the about page and here we have the beautiful about page with two featured images now let's explore the other settings for the pages if you go to your dashboard and scroll down you'll see the option to set the sidebar layout just like the free version and you also get the option for single layout currently it is selecting the default layout that we have selected in the customizer and let's go with the another layout so let's go with this layout and click on update and let's view the about page and we have this about page then if you want to go with this layout let's go with this layout click on update and click refresh and here is about page with different layout so feel free to experiment with the layout that you want to use I would recommend you to use the layout based on the images that you have in this case this layout looks good for the about page so let's go with this layout and click on update and let's go back to the customizer currently it is not refreshed so let's refresh our customizer then scroll to the about section and here we have the about section with two beautiful images now let's go back to the general settings to the other settings the next setting is social media setting and it is similar to the free version here you can add up to 10 social media profile and here it will show on the left hand side the next setting is for social sharing and here you get an option to enable the social sharing for your post if you have noticed 
in the pro version there is social share option at the end of each post and on the single post you also get the social sharing option it makes easier for your visitors to click on the post and share your post on social media platforms currently we have enabled five different social media platforms and here you get tons of option if you want to enable any of the option you can just click on this eye icon and it will enable this option if you want to disable any option then you can just click on this eye icon and it will disable the option if you want to sort the order simply drag and drop wherever you want you also get an option to change the share level so here you can share the level so let's change this one to and here the changes happens in real time you also get an option to change the like level and here is the like count and if you want to change the like level simply click on this pencil icon and it will take you to that section here you can see the like level and if you want to change this one with whatever text you would like feel free to do it from here now let's return back okay so the next setting is for post and pages settings and these settings apply to your post and pages the first one is hide archive prefix just like the free version i have already covered that the next option is for enabling the blog excerpt this has been also covered earlier and it is similar to the free version you can also control the excerpt length and here you also get an option to add the blog title and blog description just like the free version and if you go to your home page and you scroll down here is the title and the blog description the next is the read mode label if you want to change it feel free to do it from here the next option is to show like button in your blog post and it is enabled by default the next option is for avoiding automatic cropping of featured images in home archive and search results by default when you upload an image the theme automatically crops the image to the recommended size so in some cases your images may not look good in that case if you want to display the image exactly as uploaded you have to enable this option then we have the like label option now there are some settings that affect your individual post so let's open one post and here we are on a single post and the first option is to show like in single so let's enable this option and it is enabled by default the next option is to avoid automatic cropping of featured image in a single post. By default, as mentioned earlier, the theme automatically crops your images into predefined sizes. And sometimes the images may not look good. In that case, you can enable this option and it will display exactly as uploaded. However, it will increase your image size. So let's enable this option. And since the image I have uploaded is of recommended size, you cannot see the changes but if you upload an image that is more than the recommended size then you will see the changes in real time so let's disable this option and the next option is for hiding the author section just like the free version and you get the same option to show the related post which is enabled by default and these are the settings which we have already covered in the free version here we get an extra settings that is the author signature in pro version you can add the author signature and display at the end of each post so let's add an author signature you can simply drag and drop your signature or choose from the media library i have already uploaded one so let's go with this one click on choose image and if you scroll down here is the author signature you can also enable the social media links that links to your social media profile and these are the social media profile that you have added in social media settings if you add any social media profile here it will be also updated here and here as well in addition to this you also get an option to change the alignment of the signature so you can go with left alignment you can go with center alignment 
which is default or you can also go with the right alignment so let's stick with the center as this looks better now let's explore other settings the next is the trending section will display on the home page so let's go to the home page and scroll down and the trending section displays just below the shop section and above the newsletter section so let's enable this option and here you can see some of the posts and on hover it shows the second image as you can see here so now let's explore what are the settings available you get an option to change the background image and for that you should use a png image currently it has a beautiful background with some kind of patterns you can also change the section title and the section description and here you get different option to change the content type the first option is to select your post then the next option is to select a category and from that category it will display three posts and the next option is for selecting the popular post so let's go with popular post and here you get an option to select the popular post based on the post views or you can also display the popular post based on the comments the other option was to select a category so let's select this option and here you can see all the list of categories that you have created so let's go with fashion category and here we have three different posts from fashion category in addition to that you can also select the post that you want to feature in the trending section so let's do that and to add the post simply click here here you'll see the list of posts that you have published and you can select the post that you want to add in this trending now section so let's go with this post and for this let's go with this one and for the third one let's go with this one and here we have the beautiful trending now section and if you have noticed currently when I hover over these images it is not rotating it is because this image doesn't have the second feature image set so if you want to have that animation you have to edit this post so let's do that for one of the posts let's go to the home page and click on this post and click on edit post scroll down and here you can see that we haven't set the featured image so let's add one let's go with this one and click on select click on update and go to the customizer in order to refresh the customizer you can just toggle this option and it will refresh the customizer and here we have the animation for this post since this post doesn't have the second featured image it is not rotating so feel free to change images for all of your posts if you want to have this cool animation so now let's publish these changes and go back the next setting is for newsletter let's explore this one too and here you get the same option just like the free version the next setting is for instagram settings and here the settings are same like the free version but you get an extra option to enable the Instagram in the header. So let's enable this option and scroll to the top and here as you can see we have the Instagram section at the top. Let's publish these changes and return back. Now let's explore the miscellaneous settings. The first option is to change the header one background image if you have noticed we have the background image with the pink color feel free to change the image if you like to use different image for that you should use a png image that is a transparent version the next option is to enable or disable the admin bar so if you are not aware what does admin bar means so if you are on your site so let's go with this site and this is your admin bar if you disable this option this admin bar will disappear 
so depending upon whether you want or not you can enable or disable this option the next option is to enable lightbox for your images and when you enable these images when someone clicks on your images the images will pop up so let's see how it works we have to enable this option click on publish and let's change any of our existing posts or pages so let's update this page so let's click on edit let's add an image here and let's click on update and view the page and let's scroll down and currently if you see that we don't have the light box feature enabled though we have enabled this option from the customizer so let's go to our dashboard and see so in order to make your images pop on a click you have to link this image to a media file so just click here and link it to the media file and once you do that click on update go to your about page or any other post or pages where you have added the image and now let's click on the image and as you can see here the image pops up and this is how you can use the lightbox feature for your images now let's go back to the customizer the next option is to enable the dark mode so let's enable this option and click on publish and as you can see here here is the toggle for the dark mode let's enable the dark mode and here is the dark mode it looks beautiful and it is something that you should enable so that it is easy to read during night times so let's revert it back the next option is for enabling the sticky header and when you enable this option your header will be sticky and if you scroll down here you can see the header is sticky the next option is to make your last widget sticky what it really does is make your last widget sticky so let me show you so let's enable this option click on publish and go to the home page so let's go here let me close this one here go to the home page and let's scroll as you have noticed here though this section is scrolling this is sticky now since this is our last widget and this is very useful if you want to place any kind of advertisement or if you want to place your newsletter in the last widget now let's return back to the customizer and explore the other option the next option is to enable the drop cap and when you enable this option the first letter of your post and pages will be larger so let's open this post and here you can see the first letter is larger if you want to use this feature you can enable or you can simply disable this feature the next option is to change the affiliate widget level if you remember in the pro version demo there was an option to display the affiliate product below each of the post so let me show you how you can easily add the affiliate product of your post so let's go to the dashboard and click on all post and go and open any of the posts. so let's open this post and scroll down till you see the affiliate box to add your affiliate code simply click on this box and paste the affiliate code and once you are done just click on update and if you visit this post and scroll down you will see the affiliate product showing below your post and in the customizer you get an option to change this default text so let's go back to the customizer and here let's change this to something else and here you can scroll down and as you can see here the affiliate widget label is successfully changed this affiliate product is also shown on the home page so let's publish this one and go to the home page and if you scroll down and below this post there is an affiliate product section in this way you can promote your affiliate products and this option is available for each of your posts 
now let's go back to the customizer and here the next option is to enable or disable this animation if you don't like the animation that takes place on the home page you can simply disable this option the next option is to change the photo for image that we already covered in the past now let's go back and the next setting is for google analytics and here you can paste your google analytics code you don't have to use any external plugins for adding your google analytics code in addition to google analytics you can add any script maybe you can add your google tag manager or facebook pixel script here as well now let's go back and see the other settings the next setting is for sidebar settings and using this setting you can create unlimited sidebar for your posts and pages i'll not go into depth on how to do that feel free to check the documentation of this theme the next option is for advertisement settings and here this theme offers three advertisement spots the first one is home page the next one is single post and the next option is for adding ads on pages so let's explore this one and on the home page you can add up to four links you can either upload an image and link that image to some website or you can also enable the add code option and add your google advertisement code on the single ad settings you get an option to upload a single image or you can also enable the single ad code to add the google ad codes the same setting is also available in pages and here you can enable this ad code and then add your advertisement code now let's go back the next setting is for performance settings and here you get different settings the first one is lazy load which will enable the lazy loading for featured images the next option is for enabling the lazy loading of the pages and post content the next one is to enable the lazy loading for gavatar and the next option is for default javascript and remove the var parameter we already covered the google fonts let's talk about lazy loading when you enable this option, it will delay the loading of your images, which will improve your site loading speed. However, if you have used any other external plugin to enable lazy loading, you should keep this option enabled. Do not enable lazy loading in the plugin as well as the theme. It will create a conflict and your images will not load. So feel free to experiment this lazy loading option. And if it works perfectly, then you can keep this enabled and if there is an issue, then you can disable this option i will keep it disabled now let's go to the default javascript option i'll not go into depth what does this really means but i'll briefly explain what it does you should enable this option what it does it it helps to improve your site loading speed it will inform the browser to delay the loading of some of the javascript which improve the site loading speed the next option is to remove the version parameter at the end of your file there is a version parameter like sarda 2.0.0 version and when you enable this option helps to improve your ranking on some speed testing website we have already covered this option and let's publish these changes now let's go back the next setting is for menus and we have already covered how to create a menus i'll also provide a link in the description below how you can easily create menus the next option is for widgets and we have already added widgets on our post and pages including the footer the next is home page settings and by default your latest post is selected since we are using a block theme this is the go to option but if you want to display a static page then you can select a static page option select the page you want to use as your home page and then for post and pages that will be your blog page you can create a blog page and assign that block page then we have the footer settings and we already added the partial footer right in the pro version you get an option to change and remove the footer copyright of the author link and wordpress link so let's enable this option and click on publish let's visit our site and let's scroll down and as you can see here the author and wordpress footer copyright is gone and we have the footer menu here as well 
feel free to add more footer menu if you want to now let's go back to the customizer the next setting is for WooCommerce and these settings comes from the WooCommerce plugin itself feel free to check the settings and configure as per your need you can find detail on how to configure these settings on the WooCommerce documentation the next setting is for additional settings and as mentioned earlier you can add your custom CSS here to slightly tweak the style of this theme then the last option is for customizer reset simply click on reset and press Y if you want to reset the settings that you have configured in the customizer please note that this will be irreversible action that means once you reset your customizer all your settings and configuration that you have done in the customizer will be gone so please be aware that do not make any reset to the customizer if you don't want to lose all your customization so this is all about the sarda theme i hope this video was helpful and you can easily set up your site using the sarda light theme and if you want to upgrade to the pro version you can easily upgrade to the pro version without losing any of your existing changes before we end this video if you are new to my channel and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel i request you to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell if you have any comments or face any issue do let me know in the comments below i love to answer them